I honestly have no idea how this annoying time stick of a course ended up tying for my highest grade in my university career so far with Civil 250. Civil 250. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my third year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the nine courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 301. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 301 during term two of the 2024 slash 2025 school year with Professor Nick Yeager. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is ELEC 301 all about? In this course, you will learn more about electronic circuits, expanding on the circuits knowledge that you've accumulated from previous circuit analysis courses like ELEC 201 and 202. You'll cover concepts such as the frequency response of an amplifier, how to bias a transistor, how differential amplifiers and op amps work under the hood, feedback amplifiers, and active filters. ELEC 301 is offered during both terms in the winter, and as of the making of this video, Professor Nick Yeager still teaches both sections. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 301 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week, you will have four hours of lectures where the professor will go through the lecture slides or work through questions from the problem sets posted on Canvas. Not gonna lie, I personally didn't get much from these lectures and after the third week of classes, I just started learning everything outside of class. And a lot of other people did as well. In terms of assignments, you will have four quote unquote mini projects that are due every three weeks. These mini projects require you to simulate some circuits in a SPICE program like LT SPICE, perform calculations of certain parameters of a circuit, make graphs of the outputs of certain parameters, and lay them out all in a report that is less than 15 pages long, not including the title and the appendices. I'm not gonna lie, these mini projects are huge time sinks. A common theme that you'll notice with them is that you'll spend 10 hours doing one part of the mini project just for the next part to ask you to do it all over again, but this time with a different transistor or something like that and it will still take 10 more hours. Even if you know what you're doing, they can still take upwards of 20 to 30 hours to complete each. So make sure you budget your time well for these mini projects. If you want examples of what some mini projects look like in terms of formatting and structure, I'll leave some links in the description below to a few students who have posted their mini projects on their personal websites. In ELEC 301, there are a total of seven problem sets posted throughout the semester. And as the name suggests, they are a set of problems that are designed to help you practice the concepts that are taught in class. There are solutions to some of the problems in the problem sets, but not all of them. So just a heads up on that. Even though they are not for marks, I would strongly recommend that you do them before each of your tests. And we will get into why when we cover what the tests are like. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 301. The course is divided into four units with four to six topics per unit. In the first unit, you'll be reviewing some concepts from previous courses, such as the small signal model, Thevenin and Norn equivalent circuits, Laplace transforms, and filtering circuits and the frequency response of amplifier circuits. You'll also learn how to use Miller's theorem and the method of open circuit and short circuit time constants to estimate the poles and zeros of a circuit. In the second unit, we learned about BJT transistors and their small signal model, how to bias a BJT using the one third rule and the frequency responses of different types of amplifiers, such as the common base and common emitter amplifiers. In the third unit, we built upon the second unit by covering the frequency response for a common collector amplifier, how a differential amplifier works and what the frequency response is like, what the inside of an op amp actually looks like, and the non-idealities of an op amp. And in the last unit, we were introduced to feedback circuits and feedback amplifiers, the different types of feedback amplifiers to control the input-output impedance, feedback topologies and the parameters associated with them, and amplifier stability. 
And that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in ELEC 301. In terms of the grading scheme and the exams for ELEC 301, here's a breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. It's pretty simple, honestly. Your four mini projects will be worth 15% each, totaling up to 60%. And your four tests will be worth 10% each, totaling up to 40%. And you must have a passing average on both the mini projects and the tests in order to pass the course. Speaking of the tests, they are written in class and you will have one hour to write them. And they generally consist of two to three problems with multiple parts to them. Most of the time, they are questions that require some calculations, but occasionally there will be true or false or multiple choice questions. To study for these tests, literally just do the problem sets before the test. A lot of the questions will be very similar or even exactly the same as from the problem sets. So you basically know what to expect by doing them beforehand. Oh, and uh, one last note about the test. If you do make a mistake on a question on the test, you're capped at 40% partial credit for that question. All right, now on to some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 301. As much as I tried to hide it in this video, I actually really did not like this course as it is not practical for what I want to do in the future. The mini projects were a huge waste of time and all I learned from this course was how to memorize and regurgitate for the tests. I know that for some people, this course could actually be useful for certain applications, but I honestly couldn't care less about it. But I actually managed to do quite well despite this. And here are some final tips that I have to offer. First, get used to using LT Spice before your first mini project. I know that you can use Circuit Maker, but LT Spice is an industry standard software. And if you plan on working in a field that requires some sort of circuit simulation in the future, most likely they'll be using LT Spice. So you don't really need a full YouTube tutorial to learn everything about LT Spice. Just fiddle around with the controls so you have an idea of how the software works before your first mini project. Speaking of your mini projects, most people tend to write them either in Google Docs, Microsoft Word, or if you're a psychopath like one of my friends, LaTeX. I personally wrote mine in Google Docs, but I will say that it was an absolute pain in the ass to make the equations every single time I had to write them. If I were to do this course all over again, I'd probably just suck it up and then learn the syntax for LaTeX as I do not want to go through the pain of dealing with equations on Google Docs ever again, holy. And lastly, I can't stress this enough, do the problem sets before the tests. Some of the questions are almost exactly the same with just some number changes, and it really helped me to study for them and do decently well on them. So I'd highly recommend it. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 92% in ELEC 301, and the class average was 81%. I honestly have no idea how this annoying time stick of a course ended up tying for my highest grade in my university career so far with Civil 250. Civil 250. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before going into ELEC 301. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in my third year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.